what's up? This is Emily with Consequence of Sound. We're at GovBall with Sunflower Bean. How you guys doing? Hi. Pretty good. <laughs> Great. How's your GovBall so far? Nice. The weather is good. It's not too sweaty. Nobody's sunburnt, you know. It was good. We played at 215, so I feel like we got that, like, you know, getting started crowd. Like, you wear your, yeah, you wear your sunglasses on the first song. Yeah. Kind of kind of time of day. Good day. Yeah. Anyone else you're really excited to see today? Uh, me and Jacob went and saw Lil Wayne and, and Tyler yesterday, and it was amazing. We saw The Voids, which was really good. And then tonight, we have a show at Mercury Lounge, so we're going to have to head out. And sound check at nine, so we're not gonna get to see like Florence. Yeah. But we would love to. 1975 strokes tomorrow. Yeah, some cool stuff. Strokes tomorrow. Yeah. We're 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 coming back tomorrow for just just a party. So have y'all been to GovBall before? Cause you're from here. No, it's it's kind of a joke that we have that like a true. It's not even a joke. It's the truth. It's just that none of us went to music festivals before we started playing them. Like the first ever music festival we ever went to, we were we were playing. Yeah. Maybe you guys went. Did you go to uh, any others? I've never been to, except maybe like a Long Island Community Center, like Rock Lobster thing. You know, like. So, yeah. So we didn't really know what to expect, but so far, like in the New York organization has come through you know like we're tr everything's moving really smoothly and we were th us and our manager were thinking maybe it's because we're in new york and people are like on the ball a little bit so you released king of the dudes in january yes ma'am with justin raisin yes uh, and it was a little bit of different recording process can you tell me a little bit about it yeah, so we, I mean, we had a couple of the songs, like, uh, idea-wise on guitar before going out to L.A. and, and doing it, um, but a lot of it was basically made in 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 two weeks, two different sessions of weeks, and um, I think that the goal was really to get some music out this year that represented a way that we were feeling and, and a pace that we were feeling. And I think we've been very inspired by the times in in the fact that artists have the ability to put out music really quickly. And like, even with Ariana Grande, who let's say, you know, n not everyone may love, but y she's releasing Thank You Next and you're feeling like you're going through something with her. Right. Yeah. And that's how I think we felt with Come For Me where we were, sitting in the van feeling these feelings like w you know wanting to deal with all this energy and and frustrations and and uh wanted to put that out into the world yeah and let let the let everyone know that that's what we were up to and kind of break the break the indie rock cycle yeah. yeah i think we just wanted to break the wheel a little bit of just you know writing songs then you know waiting months to record them and then waiting more to release them because then it's like yeah, what Julie was saying about just like current music, how it's being released now, it just feels so like there, like you're right, you're experiencing it as it's happening. You're like, wait, was like, like that was last week, you know, like the right. subject matter even. And you're like, just like, I don't know, it just everything feels much more now. And I think we wanted to capture that and just, just get it out, you know. And also those songs just had to be recorded like that. Yeah. It was just one of those things like, no, we just have to like, kick in you know in a garage for like a couple weeks and like see what happens yeah so it's, it's a lot more aggressive than than we've heard before can you talk more about like some of the frustrations you were wanting to express yeah i mean i think come for me is a really funny song especially because we sell shirts that say come for me and they're like the most hilarious thing is watching people try to buy them because they'll go up to it and kind of point to it and be like well we'll, we'll have, we'll have that, the that one the back. they want the back yeah i mean we should make ones with just the back i mean it's funny because when we were talking about putting putting it out and also making sure that it was like okay for the radio like we thought about maybe underplaying the sexual tones of it but at the same time like it is what it is and it's really in, about in at least in my mind like the line where sexuality and aggression meet up and like violence and and power yeah and like where that how kind of closely knit that energy is 
Um, and definitely, it sounds stupid to say, but female sexuality yeah. as, a f as a female, um, kind of wanting to get, in get into that in a, in a self-empowering way. And then you also have songs like, you have a song like Fear City, which is about my experience, like falling in love with a drug addict before I knew like what a drug addict was as like a New York City teenager. Um, and I've never c really covered any subject like that in any material, even if I've been able to reach my heart. I think there's a different level where you can actually look at your experience and how weird that might be and like how that really can change you and, and affect you as an artist and what what you need to say or maybe never need to say, but sometimes you do need to say. So I think as usual, we're on the path towards our truth, um, whatever that may be at any given time. And, and King of the Dudes really felt that way when we did it. And I think we're, we're really proud of it. So you are the King of the Dudes. Supposedly. Yes. How did that nickname come about? Uh, it's something that I started calling Julia because a lot of the times when you're in a band and you go to like a festival or something like that, I've told this story a million times, but um, she she's just like really confident and really good at destroying like social boundaries that happen. And a lot of bands are like four dudes who are like trying to be cool. And it's like very like high school cafeteria. And Julia kind of just walks in and like doesn't give a fuck and like, I called it kinging on them. And then our producer Justin heard that because I call Julia King sometimes. And then she was like, um, he was like, uh, we have to call a song King of the Dudes. Like yeah. it's too great a title. Like you have to write that song. And we did. Yeah. I mean, and I think it's funny. We've, we've had, we've ha got some criticism about the fact that like I didn't, call myself I, we didn't I didn't think of the idea to be like all right I'm the king of the dudes this is what I am now we're making this song it's like that's not always what art and life is about it's like sometimes you sometimes people put things on you or even like even Nick's interpretation of king kinging on someone is already like laced in its own like yeah. gender issues right like it's already kind of problematic and then to, and then taking that and owning that and regurgitating that into something that you can actually own, I, I think is, is, is part of life. You know, you, yeah. you can't all, you can't change what people want to call you. You can only figure out how it makes you stronger. Does that make right. sense? Yeah. And it's like, sort of like Julia is like, um, she's my partner in a lot of different things. And just like, I'm, I guess like the introvert, more so than you which is hard to do because I'm an extrovert so I guess it just shows that like Julia is just really like a presence that I look up to right. and yeah she's the king of the dudes like whenever I hang out with her like <laughs> you're, you're really embarrassing okay I should stop <laughs> we'll move on <laughs> um all right yeah so you're you're touring less this year what are you yes yeah, so, and by us touring less that probably means that uh, it's still a lot of touring. Yeah, fair. <laughs> Just because we, we did 130 shows last year yeah. and 167 since we announced 22 and Blue. And we thought we were doing pretty light touring this summer, but we're doing an entire tour with Beck and Cage the Elephant. And it, and I'm spoon. like, and Spoon. And spoon. So, yeah. um, <laughs> and Spoon. It's kind of yeah. like a traveling festival. Yeah. Um, so it's a, uh, as, as, in relation to last year, yes, it's definitely less touring, but but you know well, we're we're always out and about. Yeah. Always out and about. I think we're taking the time to not work up against the clock creatively, you know, for right. the first time. So that's that's exciting, you know, exciting and scary because you don't have that next, like, you know, you have your next goal, but it's just it's a lot more nebulous when there isn't like a date immediately slapped on something so it's really it's it's been really nice kind of just like jumping into this you know new this new ocean of just like you know we can take our time to create yeah a whole lot of things <laughs> the leaf 
you got it. Even my hair, which <laughs> so kindly pointed out to me. Um, I think we're excited to get back on the road. Um, our lives are unstructured a little bit when we're not touring. And, yeah. You know, it's like sailor symptom or whatever it is when you get back home and then all of a sudden you're like, what do I do with all this free time? Like, am I, you know, going to squander it or am I going to be able to find something to do? And since our schedule is so unpredictable, it's kind of hard to commit to something. And I think we all really enjoy the road. We like touring and we're going to keep on doing it. Great. Please do. I know it's... uh you can. It's. I feel like we're just complaining, and then I feel. No, I feel no, bad no. about that. I. I think we all really feel at home on stage and like on the road because we all sort of grew up doing that. And to be off the road for six months now, I don't know. It's okay. It has its. It's. It's good things and it's bad. I'm the one who doesn't like it the most. Jacob probably likes being home the most. Yeah, I'm. I'm fine. I mean, I love playing shows and I love touring, but I like. Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah. I'm not sure. It's been a psychologically taxing few months, so <laughs> I'm not really sure where where that lands us. That's, but yeah, that's fair. Well, please once, don't when stop. You, when you stop, when you stop running, <laughs> yes. you have to face yourself, and yourself is sometimes a very ugly and strange thing. 